Hi, welcome to Go on the Run. In this part one of MongoDB, I'll show you how to install and do some simple things with MongoDB from the command line. Then in part two, we'll use Go to talk to MongoDB so we can then insert data from our programming language instead of having to use the command line. So here I am at the MongoDB website, and it's just mongodb.com. So once you click on the download button, it'll take you to this tab. You click on the community server, which is the one we want to install. We can then choose our operating system, or if we want to download for another operating system, but by default, it should detect our operating system. And then you just click the download button. The download will start save it to your system in some appropriate directory, and then make sure that you then scroll down while it's downloading and click on the quick start guide. This is where you're gonna find additional information on how to install file that you downloaded. For Mac users, you have two op options. You can install the chargey zip file that you downloaded, or you can use brew to install MongoDB. I simply like using the targi zip file because then I can just easily clean up by deleting a directory. After installing MongoDB, follow the instruction for running MongoDB server, which is mongod, the command mongod. Now once MongoDB server is running, now you can use the mongo command to connect to the database. So after I've run the database server with mongod, then I use the mongo command and this is what it looks like when I have those two things running, the client connected to the server. If you scroll down a little bit further in the documentation, it tell you how to use the MongoDB shell. And that's the client that we started. And you can see that at the bottom of my screen, you can then ask to connect to a database. You can use the DB command to just tell you which database you're using. Use the use command to switch database. And then you can do things like once you have a database selected that you want to use, you can add collection to it by inserting records. I'm not going to go through all of this step by step because the documentation is fairly clear. I just said, suggest that you follow it, play around with it a little bit. Even though our intention is to use MongoDB from Go, it is good to have an idea of what it is that you can do with MongoDB. So for example, I type the DB command, it showed me that I would when I connected, it, it's connected by default to the test database. Then I use use to do's to switch to a to do's database. Remember, I didn't have to create that database. Just by saying I use it, I want to use it, create it for me when it's when um, I insert something. So I did that by saying database. So the current database I'm using is to do's. So I use DB to mean the to do's database that I switched to. And I said that task, task is the collection. Think of it as a table in traditional, traditional databases. So I task that insert one and I insert one JSON object or JSON document. I know you can see that it accepted that. Then I insert a second JSON document. I can also now look at all the documents that I have in this collection or this table if you want. And you can see when I said the find on my collection, it showed me my two JSON documents. I can say that I want this to be pretty printed or you know, sort of look like a nicely laid out JSON document. And I use the pretty command for that on the result of my query, find as a query, and there you go. So this is what it looks like when I pretty print my results. So now that you have some data in your MongoDB database, you might want to quit. So type quit as a function, so that's Q-U-I-T, open and close parentheses, parentheses, you quit and you're back to the command line. Once you're back to the command line, then you can, of course, go back into MongoDB. If for some reason you connect it to a database. So now we're connected to our to-dos database. So we can verify that. But if you don't know the collections that you have, uh, you forget, for example, you can type the get collection names command on the database and that would return you an array of the collections you have in that database. So in our case, we only have the task collection. Remember we said task is like a table. We can then switch to the test database and we can see which collections are in 
there. And this one happened to be empty. There are no collections. So we've done a few things. We've created a database by switching to a database that we want to do is we've created a collection by referencing the task collection and inserting data into that collection. Then we've searched for data in our collection, used the find query command. Uh, we've pretty print that result and we've seen how to list all the collection names in a database. That's all for this video. Uh, I want to keep it nice and short. This is just about the installation, verifying your install, playing around with it a little bit. In the next video, we'll see how to tie this up with Go. Take care. See you soon.